I think um, Mr. Benjamin, you being um, the traumatologist amongst us, could you shed some light on how that trauma diagnosed or undiagnosed is perpetuating and in some instances that catalyst for that violent behavior later on? Thank you so much for, for that. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, powerful discourse it is. Uh, so I, I can start right where you ended there in terms of the trauma. And, and I want to start with uh, Dr. Nadi Burke from Kaiser. And um, she wrote a book, The Deepest Well, and a very interesting book, easy to read if anybody wants it to get a copy. And what was significant about that book is in her work, she found herself having to treat children for the same thing over and over and over and over. And until one day she got fed up and she rocked back and she said, this can't be the way my life will be going to be. I need to find out why these children are coming in with the same symptoms that have been treated and we go home feeling proud that we have treated these children. And then she said, we need to now go to the well. We have to go to where they're drinking the water. Because it cannot be that everybody's coming with the same symptomatology, showing the same way, and all we are doing is giving them the paradigm. We have to go to the web. And so it leads me to the first question I wrote here tonight. Can we define the problem? Have we defined what is the problem? We are treating symptoms piecemeal, half meal, or not treating it at all. So the real question for me is can we define exactly what are we discussing? What, 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 what you have on there with a female panel, what, what are we discussing? What is the, the, the real thing here? But one of the things I can agree is that we are a traumatized society. I've been saying that for a long time. And it is for the very reasons that you have described. There are people who are walking around traumatized and not knowing that they are traumatized. All they have been doing is responding or reacting to life. And so, you can't keep a marriage, you have four. You, you don't know how to play well with others in the sandbox. You're vexed and scripting all their good. You're frustrated and you're not sure why. And the list goes on and on and on. And when you sit with these people and you deconstruct, you realize it's childhood. You realize it's childhood that they're living now. Sigmund Freud said it. If a childhood or the status of development, things happen, for example, trauma, it stops your normal trajectory of development and you go into survival mode. So as a child who has been traumatized, like many of our children now, without receiving the proper help, without defining the violence, without defining the problem, they grow up with that trauma. And what happens is that you begin to see life through a trauma lens. Life no longer be the same because our brain has one job and one job only, is to protect itself. And so it begins to operate in a protection mode. And if you understand that dog who is wanting to protect itself, as sweet as the dog is, that dog is always ready to pounce. And therefore we live our life in a heightened what I call hypervigilance, where you are always ready. And so what you're talking about, man, a counselor here, is serious business in that you have the trauma of childhood traversing through adulthood. And so we have to now consider the minister was right. What, what, where is this violence coming from? We have to consider whether or not the socialization of our children have been so scarred that we have removed their child, and then because they did not get the help they need, they
They continued along like thinking, believing, understanding that that trauma is normal. And because they believe it to be normal, they responded. That is why we have the negative behaviors in the school. That is why we have the negative behaviors in the community. And that is why we have the negative behaviors as a adults. I can almost guarantee if we examine every person who has been convicted of a violent crime, chances are, chances are that they would have come along a continuum of trauma and not knowing how to deal with that trauma, it now manifests into what they know, into who they have become. And to me, that is a greater challenge. Understanding how do we protect three layers? The first layer are children, because they are at the starting line. So we have to protect them from that trauma. If they were traumatized, we have to get to them quickly to provide intervention. We then have to deal with our adolescents and young adults, because they would have been traumatized and did not receive help, so they are responding to that trauma. So we now have to put programs in place and deconstruct what is going on there. And then, counselor, we have to deal with the adult who have been socialized all their life to live and deal with that trauma. And so only when we can treat with that trivia, the child, the middle, and the adult, then we will see change. We cannot put all our emphasis on the children and forget the middle and the end. We cannot put all our emphasis on the adult and forget the middle and the child. We will be spinning top and bottom. That is what we have been doing for a very long time. Thank you.